uh, well, now we're going to continue. Thank you. We're going to continue with um, Inna Pokazanyeva. She is a postgraduate student from St. Petersburg State University. And the uh, topic of her report is travel journalism and the phenomenon of digital nomadism. And she is with us right now. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, I guess, Inna. Uh, of course, we can see you very well, but not hear you very well. Not at all, actually. There is an icon with a microphone, and you should turn it on. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you, please. I have um, presented you already, but you can say a couple of words about yourself, and please start on your report. Well, hello, everyone. Здравствуйте всем. Uh, I am a PhD student from St. Petersburg State University. Я аспирант из СПБГУ. Я работаю над темами travel журналистики и uh, феноменами репрезентации на телевидении, а также travel блогингом и travel 2.0. But first of all, I'd like to thank the organizing committee of Tongsk University for an amazing opportunity to participate in this web conference, I think it's very important that scientific community is acknowledging digital nomads in 2016. My research is primarily focused on travel journalism and user-generated content about traveling on the internet, that is Travel 2.0, and documentaries about foreign countries, cultures, the others, and their traditions. In this particular research and this presentation, I will explain the phenomenon of travel journalism, travel 2.0, and its connections with global nomadism and nomadic lifestyle. Next slide. So, everyday life of a modern man now exists in two dimensions real and virtual. And judging by the popularity of social media among teens and young adults, life exists mostly in the virtual form. We wake up, we turn on our computers, we check emails, we go on Facebook or Vkontakte to check for the news because we barely watch television anymore. We buy online, we talk with foreigners or friends or family online. We work online, we do everything online now. Almost every part of the world is truly connected right now through the web. Um, this globalization, portability, availability of technology gave people the ability to travel and work online. Now, before I move to the travel journalism and travel 2.0, I will shortly explain digital nomadism and why it is the key to travel blogging. So digital nomadism is uh, a new social cultural phenomena, which is a product of the network information society, which emerged due to the introduction of the latest computer technologies into people's everyday lives. In this new environment of modern mobility and globalization, Millions of people got involved into network forms of social communications. Most people are represented on this or that social network, like, for example, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and others. But digital nomads are much, much more mobile than regular people. They lose social and natural national ties, becoming the cosmopolitans of the 21st century. Digital nomadism is also an escape from the life filled with schedules, rules, standards, and stereotypes. That cosmopolitan lifestyle causes the blurring of the national, state, and souvenir borders and acquisition of the global identity. The new global identity is super flexible to any new environments, social and cultural superstructures of societies. That is why digital nomad easily adapts to any new environments. This is why it's so easy for him to travel, to change places, to move countries. 
digital nomads lose the attachment to the area where they were born and raised that is usually considered the home or motherland in the most cultures. That concept disappears along with the concept of national. What remains is mobility. That is the new law. Perhaps this is why modern travelers are seeking authenticity, which they have lost. So the mobility is the new law. Before the internet era, employee needed to meet with employer face to face. Now, thanks to the messengers like Skype or FaceTime, there is no such necessity. On the contrary, now is a new globalization era. Digital nomads got new work opportunities. They create and maintain businesses independently. Now the digital nomads are freelancers. They, due to the new digital environments, are able to work regardless their place of residence, living the nomadic lifestyle. Basically, they are retreatants who only need four major things. So in reality, they only need freedom and their own schedule to create, to work, to live. They need Wi-Fi for laptop, obviously. They need food like everybody else. And they need people and places for inspiration. Inspiration is very important for travel journalists and travel bloggers. I will talk about this a little bit later. So, what jobs do they have? Among the most common occupations for digital nomads are web designer, IT specialist, tutor, travel writer, travel photographer, etc. Digital nomads usually work from cafes and bars, libraries, parks, airports, host couches, and other public places with Wi Fi. These places create light noise, making the workspace more authentic and inspirational. They are always plugged into net. This lifestyle saves money as well. Digital nomads cut spends on renting the apartment, car renting, and other maintenance ser services. For the citizens of the most Western car countries, it's much more cheaper to live six months in South in some Southeast Asia country for one month for like for in Moscow, New York or London. So that's much more cheaper. More than that, they can conduct businesses without expenses on ranking an office and its maintenance. They are very aesthetic. This is one of the key concepts. This gives an opportunity to live and travel lighter and with minimal financial and physical costs. They buy all they need on the road. They collect experiences, not things. Reducing the cost of living, one, but not the main reason for becoming digital nomad. The main reason is freedom associated with nomadic lifestyle. It's freedom from work, nine to five. It's freedom from business relations. It's freedom from dress code, from schedule, rules, etc. Crossing the national borders is just a physical representation of that freedom of the mind. Uh, the feeling of the absolute freedom is just an illusion. Freedom disappears, then digital nomad is facing with inability to go online. It can be bad connection or coverage of the internet or just the broken wires. Digital nomads completely dependent from the net so before the trip, nomads are exploring new environment or seeking help from uh, older nomads for some tips. And some sites, for example, nomadlist.com offers beginners the basic domestic and cultural information about the cost of the living, security, internet coverage, traditions, and customs of the local people, the climate, touristic and non-touristic attractions. In the absence of the internet, digital nomads lose their means of livelihood. They are no longer uh, digital nomads. They just unemployed travelers. So the access to the internet is essential 
for the existence of the digital nomad. Digital nomad moves in two dimensions, physical and virtual. For example, travel blogger writes or shoots his stories in real physical time and space. Then he encodes this information for his or her readers or viewers. So the story is represented to the audience in a modified form. What was the real story behind it? What has been accidentally or intentionally erased from the viewer? Maybe there wasn't even a journey and it's just a product of writer's imagination. It is impossible to answer those questions because the final piece, final work of travel blogger is already independent travel illustrated with pictures. The viewer sees the photos, videos on his screen or laptop or mobile, and he travels with the author without leaving his comfortable room. He travels space and time. Such journey is possible with means of web, television or radio. Spanish sociologist Manuel Castells pointed out that a permanent connectivity, not motion, is the critical, is the critical thing. Thus, nomadic mobility can be both physical and virtual. So moving on to travel journalism and travel 2.0, before the era of the internet, only journalists were informing people on traveling foreign cultures, countries, traditions. Now that paradigm, paradigm has changed and professionals have to share the seat with non-journalists. This situation completely changed the surface of modern media space. So what is travel journalism? You can see a full definition on the screen but I will say that travel journalism is basically, basically print online broadcast reports of journalists about their travels abroad. Travel journalism didn't come up from the nowhere. Travelogue is the oldest genre in Russian literature. It formed alongside with Russian journalism. The earliest example of Russian travel writing appeared as early as 20th century in the forms of religious travelogues or Khojenia. Among the first examples of travel writing in Russia, you can see travelogues by Radishev, Pushkin, Van Vizin, and Chekhov. Out of all literary genres, Travel writing to the greatest extent is based on a gamble, an adventure. The content of travel writing reflects the sequence of events, incidents and meetings of the author during his travels. He chooses the most important and interesting subjects, providing multiple interrelated information about particularities of a destination, including but not limited to attractions, facilities, infrastructures, and more abstract values such as overall atmosphere. But the deeper aspiration uh, has always been self-discovery. It echoes in the modern travel articles when travel writers compare and reflect on the events and meetings occur during his or her trips. In the last 15 years, there was a rapid growth of travel journalism and travel 2.0 as technologies advanced and became more accessible, more powerful and more widespread. In this new online environment, many users have acquired the platform for self-expression. Now, literally everyone with a laptop and Wi-Fi can post anything about any moderation. That leads us back to travel journalism and its state in 2016. What happened with this area of journalism? Boundaries between professionals and amateurs are blurred. Since anyone can access the platform for self-expression, media space is occupied by travel bloggers, travel photographers, travel tutors, and other digital nomads writing about travel. 
Travel journalism turned mostly into lifestyle journalism or feel-good journalism, which can be defined as a journalistic field that primarily addresses its audience as consumers, providing them with factual information and advice in an entertaining way about goods and services they can use in their daily lives. Most modern travel articles are all about where to and how to type of information or fun stories. Now we are stepping into a danger zone. Travel journalism and travel blogging are not the same thing. It is super controversial topic in the journalistic theory, but I will try to explain. As of right now, there are four different translations of travel journalism in Russia, such as you can see on the screen. And the term itself, travel journalism, is often confused with travel writing and travel blogging. Another thing that isn't helping, that position of blogging in journalism theory is unclear. Some say there is no way it is journalism. Some say that blogging is a form of citizen journalism. Well, it can be, but not always. Now, let's see the difference between travel journalism and travel blogging. So, travel journalism is a professional activity. It's a job of a journalist. Journalist has a task from the editorial board and a deadline for this task. Travel blogging is usually a hobby or a freelance activity, but not a real profession. Although, Travel blogging can be a full-time occupation for a digital nomad, but digital nomad is self-employed and has his or her own deadline. The forms of travel journalism are TV program, radio program, print, or web article, and the forms of travel blogging are blogs, podcasts, and feeds in various social media. Travel journalism is not a part of Travel 2.0. But travel journalists can be engaged in travel blogging and travel 2.0 as a hobby or freelance activity. Travel blogging is a part of travel 2.0. Some travel 2.0 can be seen as citizen journalism. The terms travel writer and travel blogger are extremely popular nowadays, referring to freelance writers and photo and videographers who work online and create stories about their travelings around the world. Let's take a closer look at travel writers first. Both travel journalists and travel bloggers inform about tourism and travelling, but travel bloggers are writers first. They transform their personal experiences into stories. As a result, the emergence of an online lifestyle information which is not much of a newsworthy type, but mostly leisure and recreational. And it's not bad. Some researchers say that travel writing borrows freely from memoir, journalism, letters, guidebooks, confessional narrative, and most important, fiction. Well, not always fiction. Travel blog is the equivalent of a personal diary. Travel blog is a form of citizen journalism can reach audiences that are unreachable for traditional media. Travel blogger is marketing manager, spokesperson, web developer, editor in one person. Now let's look at characteristics of the travel journalists. Mm. Travel journalist is a journalist first, not a writer, not a marketing manager, not a PR person. Travel journalist has a journalistic perception. They search for the best available version of the truth. They publish regardless of the type of the story and genre, independent, correct, timely, significant, and socially beneficial information. And what is travel 2.0, you ask me? It comes from travel and web 2.0. So basically it's a it's the second wave of travel websites. In narrow understanding, it is apps where travelers shop and book travels. In a broader, it is wikis, mashups, blogs that enable comments. Travel 2.0 are various travel related and user generated forms of messages and so on. 
is it the most trust trustworthy and reliable source of travel information on the internet? Some say yes, some say no. Let's let's understand why there is a, such a controversy. Travel 2.0 influences greatly consumer decision making and reshapes previous patterns dominated by the traditional media. Often it becomes the main source of travel information while lacking the reliability, transparency, or the professional filter. In this situation, traditional media adapt by partially going online. They need to collaborate with this new reality to remain re relevant. So almost all Russian travel products, journals, travel programs, travel channels are represented online. This all led to situation when the user becomes a social influencer and marketing advisor. Now look at the popular YouTubers, look at Instagrammers, they get paid, they all do sponsorships. Sometimes they honest about it, sometimes they hide it, but people listen to them. People decide where to go on a vacation, what country, what hotel, what restaurant. Now let's look at the problems travel journalism and travel 2.0 are facing right now. Modern tourist is privileged. He goes, he eats, he buys. Offers of travel media avoid controversial cultural, economic, or political topics. You barely hear about poverty or violence from popular travel bloggers or travel shows. There is a lot of self reinvention and rediscovery. Most travel media are light, charming, inspiring, inspirational. People are just having fun. There is nothing on Western supremacy or oppression. It's just no fun to talk about it. It brings the viewer down. Touristic consumption is encouraged in various travel shows as well. For example, heads and tails shopping and many others. So, in conclusion, I'd like to say that researchers from all over the world are focused on social media effects. It's the new area of research and particularly interesting in the light of digital nomadism. Travel 2.0 and travel blogging are growing in its influential powers. It does not only reflect the personal interests of users, but also affects greatly public opinion on tourism and traveling. Modern travel media form the image of a country and its people. Amateur travel journalism and travel blogging are turning into hip activities. The popularity of travel journalism led to an increase in the number of real and virtual travel schools that teach the basics of travel writing, photo or video shooting, and editing during the travels. Despite the infancy of the travel journalism theory in Russia, the number of travel school grows each year, often leading to disruption of inaccurate information, terminological confusion, substitution of the key concepts, and to the corruption of the full, whole theory of travel journalism. So I've tried to I've tried move to really move. fast so some students or Lecturers can ask me questions about my research and maybe I can answer them right now or in the chat. Yes, unfortunately, thank you very much, first of all, for your report, of course. Unfortunately, we do not have time right now. We are a little bit behind the schedule because we have all the participants here today and just amazing. And thank you for finding time and for showing interest to our conference and to the topic, of course. And we are looking forward to receiving your uh, the full text of your report uh, for the website and for the publication, of course. Yes, and my report is in Russian. My доклад будет на русском, так что вы можете почитать на сайте. И зададим вопросы, and we will ask questions. Again, thank you very much. Thank you.